Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we are checking out 100 Jurassic World figures. So let's jump right in. Starting with the bin on the right, our first one is a huge T-Rex figure in the orange coloring. And by moving the tail, you can activate its roaring pose or its chomping pose. Here is the Ocean Protector Mosasaurus figure. This is one giant aquatic dinosaur. It has the dark blue body with all the little white specks all along its body, and it has poseable fins, a tail, and a jaw too. Here is the Epic Attack Carnotaurus. This one came out pretty recently. It features the tail that you can use to move the head. There's a button on its back for a chomping action. And best of all, there's these buttons on its side to activate the epic attack sound effects. This is the Dino Tracker's Sino Tyrannus. It's a medium sized dinosaur figure and it features two buttons on its back. The first button activates its mouth and the second button activates its tail. Up next, I've got a Scorpios Rex figure. Actually, I've got two of them. This first one is the older version. It has the yellow, the white, and the dark blue coloring. And this is the newer version with a dark brown coloring and orange detailing. And on both of them, you can press down on their body for the attack. Way back here, we've got a T-Rex from the first Jurassic World movie. And this one is actually a custom colored one with the red, the black spots, and the yellow underbelly. Plus there's one action button for its jaw. Here is a Rajasaurus figure, I believe from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the dark blue body with the white detailing along its chin and on its neck. And when you press down on its body, it has a chomping action. This is the Mega Raptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the red body in the back and the blue in the front with these huge claws on its hands. Next up is the Regalus Ceratops figure from Dino Trackers. It has yellow, it has some dark green on its face and on its body, and has poseable legs and this lever on its back for the sound effects and attack. This is another Carnotaurus figure, but this one's a bit older. It has the orange sides with the darker brown top, and you can use the tail to move the head and chomp the jaw. Here is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. It's got the tan with brown striping and the bright red along its back and on its face too. Here's a Baryonyx figure with a bright green on its body, some dark green along its back and legs, and the dark brown on its neck and its head. Next up is an Albertosaurus figure, I believe from Camp Cretaceous. It has the green body with the orange accenting along its head and side, and it features the tail that moves its head and chomps its jaw. This is the Sarcosuchus dinosaur from Jurassic World. This version is in the green with the brown on top, and it features the tail that moves the head and chomps the jaw. And here is another Carnotaurus figure, but this is the Sound Surge Edition. So it has some pretty basic red coloring along its body and a single button on its back for the sound effects. Here is an Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It features the tan body with the brown accenting on top and the action when you press down on its body. This other T-Rex figure here is the Sound Surge T-Rex. So it has the brown coloring on its body and the single button for the sound effects. This is Apachycephalosaurus. It has the green underbelly and the orange top and sides and has an attack button when you move its tail. Here's the Jurassic World Basic Edition Atrociraptor in the white coloring with the brown striping. We saw the Hammond collection earlier and this is a normal Camp Cretaceous Ceratosaurus figure. It still has the bright red along its back and face and this one has a slide lever action for sound effects. Here is an Ankylosaurus figure in the dark brown, the gray, and the green coloring. And it has one action button on its back for swinging its tail. And here is our first Triceratops of this collection. This one is in the bright orange coloring with the brown accenting on top and a single button on its back for the roaring action. This is the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor figure. It features a huge head and some crazy looking teeth on the inside. This next figure is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure. It came out quite recently. And right on the side is that button for the sound effects. This is the Dino Trackers Zunoceratops figure. This is a newer version of this dinosaur. It has the brown, tan, and black coloring and a single button on its back for the stabbing action. 
I've got another patchy cephalosaurus in here. This one is tan and dark blue, and it has the same attack action when you press down on its tail. This big old dinosaur is a Cynoceratops. It is in the soft green with the brown accenting on its back and some brown orange accenting along its frill. And with this figure, you can move the tail to move its head around. Check out this Baryonyx figure here. This one comes in the gray with white, dark blue, and bright blue accenting. Plus it has the slide lever action for the roaring sound effects. Here is our next Triceratops figure of the collection. This one comes in the dark green camouflage coloring with the brown along the top. And it actually has two attack buttons, one for moving the head and one for moving the tail. Here's another big figure. This is another Cynoceratops figure. This one has a brighter green coloring with the light tan accenting and the bright orange coloring along its frill. And it has one button on its back to move its head up and down. And here is a Velociraptor figure. This one is in the green coloring and it has one single attack button on its back to move its arms in a slashing motion. This figure right here is a miniature Parasaurolophus figure in the soft brown with the darker brown and black coloring along its back. This figure is pretty special. This is a hybrid T-Rex figure from the first Jurassic World movie. And this is actually a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus. Back here is a little Monolophosaurus figure. It has the green, the yellow, and the red coloring and has fully posable arms, legs, and you can use the tail for a chomping action. Over here is a Herrerasaurus figure in the bright green coloring. It also has some blue and a darker green along its back. And here's another Ankylosaurus figure. This one has similar coloring. It's got the yellow on the bottom with the gray spikes and the blue top, but this one has a slide lever action for swinging the tail around. Here's a special looking Spinosaurus figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got the blue body with the battle damage on the side and the bright red spine. This next dinosaur I believe is from the Dino Tracker series and it's called the Geniodecti Cirrus. It's colored in the bright yellow and brown and it has a single button on its back for chomping. Here is another giant Triceratops figure. This one is in the soft gray coloring with some darker accenting along its back. And it has two action buttons on its back, one for lifting its head up and the other for swinging its tail. This next figure is the Dimetrodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. And not only that, but it is the Battle Damage Edition Dimetrodon. Pretty cool. This Velociraptor figure is actually spring-loaded so it can leap into the air. Plus, I really like that bright yellow coloring. This little figure is a Gallimimus, and this one's pretty special because it actually has an attack button on its back for running. Here is our first winged dinosaur of this 100 Jurassic World Dinosaurs collection. This is a Dimorphodon figure in the gray coloring and the purple accenting. I've got another patchy Cephalosaurus in here. This one is from the first Jurassic World movie and it features some battle damage on the side and the tail that can move the head up and down and side to side. Here's another Velociraptor figure. This one is in the red and dark purple coloring. And over here, I've got a miniature Dilophosaurus figure with adjustable frills. So you can have them hidden or you can have them brought forwards. And here is a miniature Mosasaurus figure. We saw the huge ocean protector one earlier. And now here is a miniature version of that. And now it's onto the bin on the left side. But before we dive into that, why don't we check out these brand new ones that I just got. First up is this Dino Tracker's Bistaheversaur. And here is the figure. It's pretty crazy looking. It's got the tan, some darker accenting along its neck and chin, and some more darker coloring with some orange along its tail. And check out these huge dangerous looking spikes. It looks like they actually move. There's actually two action buttons right here. So I bet one of them, there we go. That button makes those spikes move back and forth. That is pretty crazy looking. And the second button here moves its head up and down. That's pretty unique. I haven't seen another Jurassic World figure that has that type of attack. Plus it came with this headgear, so let's go ahead and put it on. There we go, strapped in and ready to go. The next new figure is the Dino Tracker's Elasmosaurus figure. 
This aquatic dinosaur has some soft blue coloring. It's got a super long neck, a pretty evil looking face, and all of its fins are adjustable. Plus there's two buttons on its back. The first one moves its head back and forth for an attack. And the second button moves its head up and down for a different attack. And it also comes with a backpack piece. So let's go ahead and put that on too. And there we go. This one was actually pretty easy to put on. In the back here, we've got the giant Giganotosaurus figure. It has two attack buttons, one for swinging its torso around, and one for snapping its jaw. Up in front here, we've got a custom colored Indominus Rex figure with a blue underbelly. It's got purple, orange, and black, and some bright green eyes. Back here is a new figure that I just got. This is the Dino Tracker's Indominus Rex figure. And check that out. It's got some glowing green lights in its neck. Here is the Battle Damage Allosaurus figure. You can see the Battle Damage right here on its side. And you can even open up its ribs too. That's pretty crazy and pretty cool. This is the Tarbosaurus figure with the gray, the black, and the red, and these huge spikes running all the way down to its tail. I've got another Giganotosaurus figure in here. This one is a lot smaller and is the Sound Surge edition. Here's another Ceratosaurus, similar to what we saw earlier, except that instead of a slide lever action, it has a button on its back for the chomping. This is a Cryolophosaurus figure from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the dark blue body with that white and orange accenting. Here is the second Ragosaurus of this collection. This one is in the brown coloring with the dark blue accenting. It's got the same big old spikes coming out of its neck, and it has the same chomping action. This next figure is an Iguanodon figure with the tan coloring and the darker brown with tan striping along the top. This crazy looking figure is the Dino Tracker's Endoraptor figure. It has a button on its back for some roaring action and you can move the arms for even more chomping and sound effects. This next figure is an Ankylosaurus, but this is from the Hammond collection. So it's a lot more detailed and a lot more poseable. Here's another Albertosaurus figure, but this is the Battle Damage Edition. So you can see the Battle Damage right here on the side. You can close the ribs and then close the skin. This Triceratops figure is from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the bright orange frill with the darker green and the lighter green coloring too. And it has an action when you press down on its body. This next figure I believe is called the Siamosaurus. It has some really cool coloring along its body and a bright red spine and the tail that controls the head and the jaw. Here is a basic Pyroraptor figure with the orange coloring on the front and the black in the back and all over it has the feather texturing. Here is the first Scorpios Rex of this collection. This is a smaller version than many of the others I have, but it still has the classic yellow underbelly and the black top. This figure is the Concavenator figure from the Hammond collection. So it is super poseable and I love the coloring on this figure. Here is the Diablo Ceratops from the Dino Tracker series. It's got a bright red body and frill and some crazy looking horns in the front too. Plus it has the lever on its back for some sound effects. This other figure from the Dino Tracker series I think is called the Dryptosaurus figure. It has some pretty cool looking spines on its back and it has the lever as well for sound effects. This is the Battle Damage Edition Baryonyx. You can see that it's painted Battle Damage on its neck, on its leg, and I think that's just about it. Plus it has an attack button on its back for chomping. I believe this is the Hammond Collection Pteranodon. This figure is actually pretty special because it has rubberized wings. So it feels and looks a whole lot more realistic. This feathered dinosaur is called the Eocarcharia and it is also from the Dino Tracker series. It has this lever on its back for the sound effects and the attack. Here's another Dino Tracker's dinosaur. This is the Stegosaurus figure. It has this huge backpack right here and two action buttons. One swings its tail up and down and the other swings its tail back and forth. 
I've got another Allosaurus figure in here. This one is in the tan, the blue, and the dark blue coloring with two action buttons. The first chomps its jaw, and the second moves its arms. Over here, I've got an earlier version of the Quetzalcoatlus figure. This is one of the largest winged dinosaurs, and this version is super brightly colored. This is the Dino Tracker's Orco Raptor figure with the dark green and black coloring, and it has the lever on its back for the sound effects and attack. I've also got some smaller Velociraptor figures in here. I've got Velociraptor Blue. There's also this purple and red Velociraptor figure. Here is, I believe, the Hammond Collection Velociraptor, so it's a whole lot more poseable. And here is the Battle Damage Edition Velociraptor that you can turn on and off with the click of a button. This next crazy looking figure is the Dino Tracker's Edophosaurus figure. It has a ginormous spine on its back, and you can use a tail to move its head back and forth. I've got a similar looking dinosaur in here, but this one is a Dimetrodon. It also has a huge spine on its back. Here is the Dino Tracker's Zunoceratops in the brown coloring with the tan and black detailing, and it has one action button for stabbing. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure. This one is all white and black, and you can use the tail to activate its frills. Here's a baby Stegosaurus figure. This one has green coloring and some red along its spines. I've got two Atrociraptor figures in here. Both of them are pretty wildly colored. This first one is green and it has some yellow along its back and its face. And this other Atrociraptor is tan and it has some red and black detailing. Here is a new Dino Tracker's Herrerasaurus figure with the orange, the brown, and the gray coloring, plus a single action button on its back for chomping. Up next is the Extreme Damage Quilmasaurus figure, and it has that battle damage right on its side that you can turn on and off. Check this out. Here's a tiny Therizinosaurus figure, but it's still got the huge claws on its hands. Here are two more figures from the first Jurassic World movie. This first one is a miniature T-Rex. It's got the battle damage on the side and the tail that controls the head, and also this Spinosaurus with the same battle damage on its side and the same control that you can use the tail to move the head. Here's an unusual dinosaur. This is a Trudon. It has a pink underbelly with the gray sides and the black accents. I've also got a Monolophosaurus figure in the brown coloring, and it has some gray detailing along its back and its face. Check out this Snap Squad's tiny Triceratops figure. It's spring-loaded, so it can hang on to things with its mouth. Here's another Dilophosaurus figure, very similar to the one that we saw earlier, but it actually has some bright red on its frills and on the crown on its head. And you can still use the tail to activate the frills back and forth. Here is a juvenile T-Rex with a bandaged leg. It comes in the bright green coloring and is quite poseable for how small it is. This is the Dino Tracker's Gigant Spinosaurus. It looks kind of like a Stegosaurus, but it has these huge spines coming out of its shoulders. Up next, we've got the Shringosaurus figure in the yellow coloring with the brown accenting. And it's got some huge horns on the top of its head. And finally, here is the Masiakasaurus figure with the dark red coloring and the yellow accenting with a single button on its back for the chomping action. This is a collection of Predator vs. Predator figures from Jurassic World, and we're going to be comparing all of them against each other. The first two figures to face off in this collection is this Spinosaurus and this Battle Damage T-Rex. Let's check out the Spinosaurus first. This is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, so this one's actually pretty hard to find nowadays. It's got the huge front arms. It's got a long and narrow snout with a lot of teeth. And this figure is quite a bit larger than its opponent, the Battle Damage T-Rex. This figure is a bright orange color. It's got Battle Damage slashes painted all over its body, even right on its face and on its chin. Now this T-Rex has tiny arms compared to the Spinosaurus, but it's still got the same jaw chomping action. Next up for the verses is this T-Rex versus this Allosaurus figure. Let's start with the T-Rex. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Battle Damage T-Rex. It's got a darker orange body than the T-Rex that we just saw, and you can turn the battle damage on and off with the click of a button, and overall it has some pretty cool detailing and darker shading. Now let's see what's different about this huge Allosaurus figure, also from Jurassic World Dominion. Now this figure also has battle damage on the side, but you can even open it up and move the ribs to show the stomach underneath. 
Now this Allosaurus is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it still has an awesome button for jaw chomping and sound effects. Up next for our Predator competition is this Jurassic Park Utah Raptor versus this new Dino Trackers Endoraptor. Let's first check out this Endoraptor. It is super reflective. It's a dark blue color. I think it might be just around the same size as the Utah Raptor, but it's got some really cool actions. First, you can move its arms for some sound effects and a jaw chomping action. And it's also got a button on its back for more jaw chomping action. Now let's see how this super old Utah Raptor holds up. You can see that little Jurassic Park tattoo on its leg right there. Now this figure used to be battery operated, but unfortunately since it's so old, it doesn't work anymore. Like many of the vintage Jurassic Park figures, it has a soft rubbery skin and it still has a chomping action when you press down on its tail. Next, let's go with a Carnotaurus versus an Albertosaurus. The Albertosaurus is a little bit smaller than the Carnotaurus and it has much brighter coloring. It's got the orange stripe running down its side and the green body and the tail twists back and forth to control the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's check out this bigger Carnotaurus figure. This figure is dark brown with a gray underbelly. It's got even smaller arms than a T-Rex does. And you'll notice that the Albertosaurus arms are a little bit bigger. And just like the Albertosaurus, the tail swivels back and forth to move the head and for a jaw chomping action. For our next verses, let's grab this other Carnotaurus figure versus this Suchomimus. Let's start with the Carnotaurus. This figure is a bit smaller than the darker Carnotaurus that we just saw. The coloring overall is a lot more simplistic. There's not anywhere near as much shading. There's a little bit of white underneath its chin and some dark coloring on its neck and the top of its head. And the actions are a bit more simplistic too. There is one button at the top of its back for some sound effects. Let's compare that to this bright yellow Suchomimus figure. This Jurassic World figure stands a little bit taller than the Carnotaurus figure. It's got a huge spine that runs all the way from the head down to the tail. And just like the Spinosaurus, it has a long and narrow snout with a bunch of teeth on the inside. And this figure has two actions. The first is a jaw chomping action and the second is a tail swinging action. Our next two predators are this huge Scorpios Rex figure and this even larger T-Rex figure. Let's start with the T-Rex figure. It's got a light brown body with the darker coloring along the top and you can move all its limbs and it has the single button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now the Scorpios Rex has a few more features. First off, I love the detailing on this figure. There's some bumps, you can see this huge ridge running down its back. It's got these tiny little spikes on its elbows. And of course, it's got the poisonous quills on the end of its tail. And it still has two action buttons. The first moves its jaw and check out those super awesome teeth. And the second button moves its arms for slashing. Our next two predators are first a Carcharodontosaurus versus a Cryolophosaurus. The Carcharodontosaurus is definitely a little bit bigger, but the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow than the Carcharodontosaurus. Comparing the size, the Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit bigger and the Cryolophosaurus is a brighter yellow color. It's got movable limbs and you can use the tail to swing the head around. And the Carcharodontosaurus, though it's not as bright, it still has some bright orange running down its back and on its neck. And instead of the tail as the action button on this figure, there's a button on its back for a chomping action. Right here, we've got a Metriacanthosaurus versus an Allosaurus figure from Jurassic Park. Let's check out this vintage figure first. Now this Allosaurus looks quite a bit different from the new Jurassic World figures. It's got a different head shape and a slightly different body. But the cool thing about this figure is that there's multiple battle damage parts that you can take off of its body. Check that out and even on its tail too. Look at all that battle damage. That is super cool. Now let's compare that with the Metriacanthosaurus. I believe this is from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom era. It's pretty bright in color and it's around the same size as the Allosaurus figure. And this one doesn't have any battle damage, but it does have an action button on its back to control the jaw. Before we continue on with the rest of the bend, let's actually open up this new Hammond Collection Concavenator. Oh, 
All right, now I think I only have one other Concavenator figure in my entire collection. So I'm super happy to add this one. It looks like it has quite a few different colors on its body. It's mainly got this blue, and there's some bright orange, brown, light tan, and then a very dark red right around its eyes. And since it's a Hammond collection figure, it doesn't have any action buttons, but its body is super poseable. You can bend it at all of its limbs and joints. And its neck and head is especially poseable, which I really like. All in all, I think this figure stands up to the quality of all of the other Hammond collection figures. Next up for our Predator versus Predator, we've got another Carnotaurus versus an Allosaurus. The Carnotaurus figure is quite a bit larger than the Allosaurus, so let's check this one out first. Now this figure has a bright orange body with the gray underbelly. It's got the tiny little front arms, just like the figure we saw earlier. And it also has the tail that you can move back and forth to move the head and chomp the jaw. Now let's see what's different about this Allosaurus figure. I think this one is even brighter in color. It's got the yellow and two tones of blue. It's got bigger front arms than the Carnotaurus figure. It's also got a tiny little row of spines running down its back to its tail. And this figure has two action buttons. The first operates the jaw and the second moves the arms up and down. The next two predators are this Dilophosaurus versus the Scorpio Venator. These figures are around the same size, but you'll see that the Dilophosaurus is a little bit longer. Now this Dilophosaurus is the basic edition, so there is no action button. You can move the limbs a little bit and you can activate the frills, but sadly that's pretty much it. Let's see how that compares against the Scorpio Venator. This figure is pretty brightly colored as well and you can move all of the limbs, but this figure does have an action button. When you press down on its back, it activates the chomping action. Check out those sound effects too. Next, we've got the Seats Mikurarum versus the Irritator. Between these two, the Seats Mikurarum is definitely the larger dinosaur. It's got tons of spikes on its head, running all the way down to its back. And like many of the other figures we've seen so far, you can move the tail back and forth to move its head and chomp its jaw. Now let's check out its competitor, this Irritator. Although it's a little bit smaller, it still has some really cool coloring with the two tones of blue on the top. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around as well. Although you have to open and close the mouth manually. Let's keep on going. For our next verses, we've got a Ceratosaurus versus an Endoraptor. And see how much longer the Endoraptor is compared to the Ceratosaurus. This Endoraptor is the basic edition, so once again, there are no action buttons that you can press, but you can still move its arms, legs, and its tail. And it's still got some awesome spikes on its body. Let's see how the Ceratosaurus is different. It's got a dark green body with some black detailing on the top. This dinosaur seems a lot more bulkier in size. And of course, it's got an action at the top of its back for roaring and sound effects. This is the Baryonyx versus the Amber Collection Raptor. I think the Baryonyx is a little bit bigger, but this Raptor is so much more brighter. Because this figure is from the Amber Collection, there's a lot more attention to the coloring and the limbs can be posed in many more different ways too. This figure is perfect for posing on a display show. Now let's check out its competitor, the Baryonyx. Because this figure isn't from the Amber Collection, there's not as much that you can pose on its body. But the cool part about this figure is that it has an action button on its back. Check out that chomping action. Now let's compare two very different dinosaurs. This is a Pteranodon versus an Allosaurus. This Pteranodon figure has foldable wings that you can open up and it's probably a foot in length from wingtip to wingtip. And it's got a button on its back to flap the wings too. Plus you can open and close its mouth manually. Now let's see this Allosaurus figure. This one is pretty simplistic in color. It has the gray on the sides and then the yellow detailing all along the top. Of course, it's got the iconic ridge right above its eye. And on this figure, there's one single action button for the jaw. These next two figures are smaller. I believe this one is called an Elephrosaurus versus, if I remember correctly, the Rugops Primus figure. The Elephrosaurus has a long and narrow snout and is mostly tan. It's got some brown as well. 
But this other figure, it's got darker coloring as well, and you can move its tiny little arms and open and close its mouth. Up next, we've got two different raptor species. This first one is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion, and this other one is, I believe, an Amber Collection Velociraptor. Just like many of the other Amber Collection figures, it is a lot more poseable than many of the normal figures. And they did a pretty decent job with its coloring as well. And the Pyroraptor has some decent detailing. You can check out all those feather designs right there. And the coolest part, I think, about the Pyroraptor are these huge feathers right at the top of its head. And next, we've got a Jurassic World miniature T-Rex figure versus a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Both these figures are pretty old, but this Velociraptor is the oldest. It's got a spring-loaded chomping action, and it features some pretty unique coloring that I don't think I have another Velociraptor that's colored like this. Now let's check out this other miniature T-Rex figure. This specific figure comes from an older line from Jurassic World. I think it was actually made by Hasbro. So it's got some battle damage right there on the side. And on this figure, you can move the tail back and forth and side to side to operate the jaw and the head. <laughs> Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a ton of Predator dinosaur figures from the Camp Cretaceous collection. And I've even got some huge brand new ones to open up today. Let's go ahead and start with these brand new ones. Let's start with the biggest one at the bottom here. This is the super colossal Indominus Rex. Let's open it up. This thing is already huge. Let's get those legs and tail on. Here is the fully assembled super colossal Indominus Rex. So first off, it has the typical coloring that uh, the smaller Indominus Rexes have. But when you open up the mouth, you can see that there's a tunnel that goes all the way down into the stomach compartment right here. So you can actually feed this Indominus Rex miniature dinosaurs and then empty it out through the stomach right here. That is super cool. Plus, even though this thing is huge, it still is fully adjustable. Of course, you can adjust the jaw. You can also twist the neck. You can adjust the arms up and down. You can move the legs and ankles. And of course, you can move the tail. All in all, I'd say this dinosaur is probably around two feet tall and maybe three feet long. We've still got two brand new dinosaurs to open up. Let's start with the Albertosaurus. All right, so this is a medium sized dinosaur. As you can see, it is a mostly green dinosaur, but it has those red striping on its side from the head all the way to its stomach on both sides. And there's an action button on the tail. If you press the button, it chomps the jaw. Plus, if you twist the tail, it moves its head back and forth like that. I have a few other Albertosauruses. Some of them even have battle damage on the side. This one does not, so this is just the normal primal attack Albertosaurus. Next up, we've got a feeding frenzy Indominus Rex. Let's open it up. All right, here is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex. Let's check it out. So it has the same coloring as the huge one that we just saw, and it has this huge face and jaw too. This dinosaur comes with tons of sound effects, and it comes with this piece of meat. Let's see what happens when you feed it. So it's making some growling noises, and when it hits the trigger in there, its eyes start glowing too. That is pretty cool. And I love how big the teeth are on this dinosaur as well. Just look at that. Those are so huge. Right up top here, we've got another Indominus Rex. This one is still huge, not quite as huge as the super colossal one that we just opened up. And as you can see, it's colored kind of the same. It has some dark gray on the top and a lighter gray on the sides. It's got those orange eyes. And this dinosaur has two action buttons on it. First, you've got the tail button that activates the jaw. And then you've got a button on its back that activates the slashing action. All in all, this is a really cool Indominus Rex figure. Up next, we've got a giant Spinosaurus with dark green coloring on the sides. 
and on its spine, there's red, white, and a little bit of green at the bottom. Plus, this Spinosaurus is fully adjustable with the neck, the arms, the legs, and the tail. And of course, you can press the button on the top of its head to open its jaw. This is a super awesome figure and huge. Right up here, we've got a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but I believe that this one was custom colored. So you won't really see coloring like this on other T-Rexes that you can get. But look how cool it is. It's bright red, black on the top, and then the orange on the sides. It almost looks like the T-Rex is on fire. That is so awesome. Back here, we've got another T-Rex. This one is normal color. It's got brown on the sides, a darker brown on the top, and the tan belly. Plus, this dinosaur has a few action buttons as well. You can move the tail, and it moves its head around, which I really like, it's super realistic. And there's even a button on the tail that you can press to open its jaw. Back here, we've got another T-Rex, but this one is battle damage. Look at that, right on the side. And pressing the button, you can turn it on and off. That is super awesome. And this T-Rex is fully adjustable with the legs, tail, neck, and the jaw as well. Back here, we've actually got another battle damage T-Rex, but this one is a bit different than the other one. Instead of having the thing on its side right here, you can see that there's a bunch of slashes all over its body, on the tail, on its legs, on its belly, and even on its face. And just like the other T-Rexes, this is fully adjustable. You can move the tail, the legs, the arms, the neck, and this one has a button at the top to make it roar. Here is another giant Spinosaurus with different coloring than the last one we saw. This one is mostly brown with the red detailing. You can see along its face, it's got that bright red coloring as well as along its spine. And even on the top, you can see that there's a lighter tan and then a dark brown color right along the top. That is super cool. Fully adjustable and it has the button on the head that you can use to open its jaw. Up next, we've got the mighty Carcharodontosaurus. This dinosaur is a mostly tan yellow coloring, but you can see that there's orange and brown striping all the way up to its head. And this dinosaur has an action button as well. With the button on its back, you can do the chomping action. Here is the Tarbosaurus. This dinosaur has totally different coloring. It is a dark gray color with black stripes all along its body. It's got those spikes all along its spine and right on its chin and on its neck is a bright red color. This dinosaur is fully adjustable with its arms, legs, tail. The tail actually controls the head and the button on the tail controls the jaw as well. Here's another fierce predator. This is an Allosaurus. It's a dark green color with red and white speckles on its neck and face. And it is fully adjustable and it's got this slide action. That is super awesome. Right over here, we've got the great Metriocanthosaurus. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a yellow green color on the sides. It's got the green coloring on top with the action button that controls its jaw. And it is fully adjustable in the legs and arms as well. Right over here, we've actually got a few Baryonyxes with totally different coloring. This first one, gray coloring with blue and a bright blue on the top and it has a slide action for its roars. This second Baryonyx is brown colored and it has blue detailing on the top and a bright orange top of the head. And the action button on this dinosaur activates the jaw. All right, here's another massive predator. This is a Carnotaurus. This dinosaur can be controlled by its tail. When you move its tail, it moves its head around. There's also a button on the tail to activate the jaw. And I love the coloring on this. This is like a dark brown red color with speckles of like a gray color as well. So it's quite detailed and fully adjustable as usual too. 
right over here, we've got a super long-nosed dinosaur. This is the Sarcosagus. This is a clay red color on the top. Look at all those spikes along the top of its body. And along the bottom is a dark green color. But I love the detail of all those spikes along its back. That really gives it a strong texture. That's really cool. And the tail, of course, controls the head so you can move the head around. Right back here, we've got a winged dinosaur. I'm sure you recognize this from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. This is the Quetzalcoatlus, and it has two action buttons. The first on the top flaps its wings, and there's actually one on the bottom that controls the mouth. Oh, here's a dinosaur you don't see too much of. This is a Ceratosaurus. This dinosaur is gray with splotches of dark brown and of course the red back and the super bright red face with the white horn on the very top. This dinosaur has an action button on its back that controls its jaw and the rest of its body is fully adjustable. Right back here is another Sarcosagus, but this one has totally different coloring. It's got the blue bottom, the dark purple top, same spines though, and then it's got orange and red splotches all over its back. That is super cool. Here is another unusual predator. This is the Majungasaurus. This dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. Although it's mostly green in the back, it has those bright yellow coloring right along its back and that bright blue color right on its neck and on its head. And this figure has quite a lot of sound effects as you can hear. The tail also moves the head around so you can make it look super realistic. All right, this is another super noisy dinosaur. This is the Cryolophosaurus. This figure is dark blue around most of its body and it's got the orange head and neck as well. I love that accent. And with this tail, you can adjust the head and wiggle it around. How cool is that? Right, here is a full-sized Allosaurus. I love the coloring on this dinosaur. It's got the tan yellow bottom and the bright blue top. That is so cool. I think we've actually got two Allosauruses here, both with different coloring. So let's check this one out first. This one has two action buttons on the top. The first controls its jaw and the second button controls its arms. How cool is that? The legs are fully adjustable and the tail you can twist as well. The second Allosaurus is mostly gray with the yellow splotches all along the top of its body. And this has one action button on its back where you press it and it controls the jaw. Right over here, we've got a brightly colored Suchomimus. This is a bright yellow with brown along its spine and this dinosaur has a few action buttons. The first controls its neck and jaw, and the second controls its tail. Plus, the rest of the figure is fully adjustable as well. Oh, here's actually a second Suchomimus with totally different coloring. This one is mostly blue along the entire body, but it's got the yellow detailing along its spine as well as those splotches. And this Suchomimus has one action on its back. When you press it down, it does a chomping action. All right, here's another Baryonyx with different coloring. This Baryonyx is light brown on the sides and the belly, and on the top has a dark blue coloring all along its back to the tail and to the head. But the coolest part of the coloring is this super reflective blue coloring right on its head. This Baryonyx is fully adjustable and it has one action button for its jaw. Here is another Cryolophosaurus. This one is differently colored than the last one that we saw. It's mostly yellow with the brown on the top and of course the bright orange crown on its head. This dinosaur is fully adjustable. You can move the tail to adjust the head. And of course, as you can hear, it comes with tons of sound effects. Here is another Metriacanthosaurus. 
but once again, different coloring than the last one we saw. This one is a bright red color with brown detailing all along its back. And on the head, you can see that it's got that bright orange and yellow coloring. There is one action button on this dinosaur, and that controls the jaw. Up next, we've got another Carcharodontosaurus. Check out the coloring on this one. This is a bright blue coloring, and it's got the brown and orange specks on its back and neck, and right around its eye as well. This dinosaur is fully adjustable with legs, arms, and tail. And there's one action button on its back that when you press, it does a chomping action. All right, we've got another Baryonyx right here. This one is bright green with brown on the top. And as usual, the arms and legs are fully adjustable and there is one action button on the top that controls its jaw. All right, check this one out. I remember this from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. This is a Dimetrodon. And look at that huge spine on its back. It's red with yellow speckles all over it. And with this dinosaur figure, when you wiggle the tail back and forth, it opens and closes its jaw. All right, I see a ton of Velociraptors in here. Let's pull a few out. This Velociraptor, is a green color with a darker green along the top and is fully adjustable. Even with the mouth, you can open and close. The second Velociraptor is different coloring. This is a blue along most of its body. It's got the tan bottom, but the coolest part of all, it's got the yellow along the top and a shining gold along its head. It's actually reflective, which is super cool. And this Velociraptor is mostly tan. You can see it along the bottom and the sides with the brown top. But most importantly, this Velociraptor has a slashing action. It is spring-loaded, so you can actually twist its torso back and forth, and it'll do this slashing action. All right, right over here, we've got a baby T-Rex with a jaw-chomping action, brightly green-colored and fully adjustable. And this is a Dilophosaurus. It is mostly gray-colored with darker gray along the top, but this Dilophosaurus actually has an action. When you move the tail, it activates its frills. That's so cool. We've still got more Velociraptors in here. Let's check them out. Here are four Velociraptors. The first is an orangish Velociraptor, and it has the slashing action. The next Velociraptor is a bright red color with green striping on the top. Look at how bright this Velociraptor is, and it is fully adjustable. The next Velociraptor is a classic one. This is blue, and it comes with battle damage on the side as well. And this Velociraptor is more of a yellow coloring with brown on the top. This one also comes with battle damage on the side as well. All right, just a few dinosaurs left. This is a Herrerasaurus. It is all green and it has different shades of green all along its body. And it is fully adjustable with the mouth, the neck, the arms, and the legs. Over here, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This is the Shringosaurus. Look at those huge horns on its head and the brown coloring on the top and the yellow on the sides. This is quite the odd looking dinosaur. At least I think so. And our last two dinosaurs of this collection. First, we've got the Great Dimorphodon. This is mostly a gray color with a dark red along the bottom of its wings, but it's still fully adjustable with its legs, its mouth, its neck, and its wings. And this Velociraptor is a dark gray color with yellow detailing right along the top of it and is fully adjustable as well. Today, I'm showing you all of my T-Rex figures from biggest to smallest, so let's jump in. My first biggest T-Rex is this super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World. This T-Rex has a bright orange body with a darker brown top. And just like all my super colossal figures, 
It can swallow miniature dinosaurs down its throat to the stomach compartment that you can open it up. My next biggest T-Rex is this super colossal Jurassic Park T-Rex. This is actually from Jurassic World Dominion. It has a much darker body. It's got black on top, brown on the sides, and a lighter underbelly. It's got a huge jaw, and this figure can also swallow miniature dinosaurs and open them up in the stomach compartment. Next up, we've got a Jurassic Park T-Rex. I believe this T-Rex was called the Bull T-Rex. And this figure too can swallow miniature dinosaurs and other small stuff, and you can empty it out in the stomach compartment. Right on top here, we've got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has some of the coolest coloring out of all the T-Rexes that I have. And it is remarkably adjustable too. You can bend the legs in all different directions, at the knees, at the ankles. You can bend the arms, you can twist the neck, and you can open the mouth, of course. Next, I've got this huge Jurassic World T-Rex with this ginormous head. This figure has the black top and brown sides, just like the super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. And this T-Rex can be controlled by moving the tail around. Back here, we've got, I believe what is called the Terran T-Rex or something like that. The special feature on this T-Rex is the tearing action with its mouth. It swings its head around and closes it at the same time. And it's got a secondary action button to swing the tail around too. This T-Rex, also from Jurassic World, is a stomping T-Rex. When you twist the tail, it stomps its legs up and down. And it has those cool sound effects too. Plus, as you notice with the cage, it actually breaks free from the cage just by pressing the button on its back. That is pretty cool. Here we've got another Jurassic Park T-Rex. So this is a very old figure. It's got the rubber body. And with this T-Rex figure, you can move the tail to swing the head back and forth. So it's not as advanced as the new Jurassic World T-Rexes, but it's still pretty cool. We've got tons more T-Rexes to go. Let's keep digging. This huge T-Rex with similar coloring as the first super colossal T-Rex that we saw has some pretty cool functions. When you swing the tail, it swings its head back and forth, and it has a roar function when you move the tail, and a chomping action, all just by moving the tail. That is pretty cool. Over here, we've got a darker gray colored T-Rex with some brown on the top. This is also by Jurassic World, and you can twist the neck around, you can open the jaw, there's a button on top, activate the chomping, and you can swivel the tail around and move the legs as well. I think this one's bigger than the rest of them. This T-Rex has one of my favorite functions. It's actually battery operated, so that when you press the button on its tail, it opens its mouth and shakes. It actually has a motor in it to do that, which is pretty cool. Plus, you can move the tail around to swing its neck around to look. That's really cool. This T-Rex was custom colored a long time ago. It's got the bright green on the side, and it's got like camo colors and black all over the rest of its body with the lighter underbelly. And just like that bright orange T-Rex we saw just a second ago, you can control chomping and roaring with this figure just by moving the tail around. Next up, we've got a light brown T-Rex from Jurassic World. This is very similar in function to the darker gray figure that we just saw. It has the chomping button on the top of its head. You can move its neck around and you can adjust the rest of its body parts too. This is the extreme battle damage T-Rex from Jurassic World. It's got some different patterning along the top of its body compared to the rest of them. But the most important part is the battle damage on both sides that you can press this button up top to turn it on and off. Plus, the rest of the figure is very adjustable as well. Here's another T-Rex with some battle damage on it. It doesn't have the extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off, but it does have these slashes all over its body, even its legs and its tail too. The rest of the figure is very adjustable, and of course, the button at the top of the head for chomping. Next up, we've got another custom colored T-Rex. This one is a super bright red color. It looks kind of like fire in my opinion. And it's got the black on the top and the orange striping right along the sides. And this figure is adjustable just like many of the other figures that I've shown so far too. 
Next up, we've got another bright orange T-Rex with the brown top. This figure is fully adjustable throughout its body, and it's got the chomp button at the top of its head. Here's one of my favorite T-Rexes. This is a dark green color, and I'm not sure that I have any other green colored T-Rexes in my collection, so this one's pretty special to me. It's also got the black detailing along the top, and its body is fully adjustable with the legs, tail, arms, and neck, and there's the button at the top of its head for chomping. Let's keep going, we still got quite a few T-Rexes to go. This T-Rex is from the old Jurassic World toy line. It's got a rubberized neck, so it's a bit flexible there, as well as the rubberized tail. And it has a chomping action with the tail. Now we're getting down to some slightly smaller T-Rex figures. This is a Jurassic World T-Rex, and it is actually a hybrid. It's got some spikes on the top of its head that you can push down and activate them by pressing the button on the back. Here is another custom colored T-Rex from the old Jurassic World toy line. It is bright red in color with black spots all over and the yellow underbelly. And it also has a chomping action on its back. Here's another similar T-Rex from the old Jurassic World toy line. This T-Rex is light tan in color all over its body. It's a little bit lighter on its belly. And just like the other two that we just saw, it has the chomping action button on its back. All right, this next T-Rex is a little bit smaller. This is a Jurassic Park T-Rex. I believe it's a juvenile T-Rex and it's actually got some battle damage right on the side. Next up, we've got a new Jurassic World Dominion figure. This, I believe, is the Sound Surge T-Rex. It's pretty small in size and you have to open and close its jaw manually, but it does come with some awesome sound effects. And we've got some model T-Rexes in here. I'm not sure what brand this is from, and you can't move any of the limbs or the jaw on this figure, but it's got the dark brown coloring. It's got some interesting shading and black stripes all over its body. Here is another dark brown model T-Rex, but on this one you can open and close its jaw. It's also got the black stripes and the lighter underbelly too. Check out that little bit of yellow right there on its nose. It's interesting. Here is a dark green model T-Rex. This one you cannot move any of its body parts, so it is standing in this awesome roaring pose, just like I'm sure you've seen in the movies. Here is a bright orange or red model T-Rex. With this figure, you can open and close the jaw. Check out all those little teeth. And this figure looks quite a bit more muscular than a lot of the T-Rexes, I will say. Here is a super bright model T-Rex. It's got the bright blue along the top of its body, as well as the gold stripes. It's got a gray underbelly and some teal coloring right along its face. <laughs> Here is a darker model T-Rex. I love the attention to detail with the skin. It's like you can see all these little bumps all over its body. It's got the black stripes as well. And on this model, you can open and close its mouth. Here is a super striped T-Rex. This has some really bold black stripes right along the top of its body, while the rest of its body is this soft tan or orange color. And it's got some super bright yellow eyes too. And unfortunately, you cannot move any of the body parts on this model. Next up, we've got a light green colored T-Rex with some darker shading and detailing along its body. You can see those bumps right along its spine. And this figure does not have any moving parts either. So it is stuck in this roaring pose. We've got some even smaller T-Rexes in here. Here is a Jurassic World T-Rex that is pretty small. It's probably seven inches from tail to the nose and it fits easily in my hand. It's got some battle damage on the side and the tail controls the jaw and face. We've actually got a few more Jurassic World T-Rexes just like that last one. This first one is actually a hybrid T-Rex. It is a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus as you can tell by these huge frills on the front. It's still got the battle damage on the side and it's got this reflective gold along the top of its body and the very front too. And this T-Rex has a bright green body. It's got the battle damage on the side still and some darker detailing right along its face. This T-Rex figure is from Jurassic Park. So this is a super old figure. 
It's got some interesting purple detailing along the top. It's got a tan body. And actually, this figure has a unique feature on the leg. You can actually bend it like that because it is a broken leg for this T-Rex. Right over here, we've got another juvenile T-Rex. This one has a bandage on its leg and the restraint on its mouth, so it can't bite people. It is super bright green with some cool detailing along the back and is very adjustable with all of its limbs too. This baby T-Rex is also from Jurassic World. It is bright green or yellow in color with some detailing along the top. And when you pull down on the tail, it chomps its jaws shut. All right, we've got some super small T-Rexes in here. I believe this one is from Jurassic World. I'm not sure actually, but they are both brown in color. This one is very adjustable. You can even move the tail around, you can move the legs and open and close the jaw. But this figure doesn't have any moving parts actually. And our last two T-Rexes of this collection from biggest to smallest. We've got a bright blue T-Rex with black stripes and no movable body parts. And this T-Rex here, can move the legs, you can twist the tail around, and you can open and close the jaw too. Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out all of my vintage Jurassic Park figures. Some of these figures were even made in 1993. So let's go ahead and get started. The first that we're gonna unbox is one that I actually just bought on eBay. This is a Spinosaurus, JP39. This looks a lot different from the new Jurassic World Spinosauruses, for sure. You can see it's got a green and gray body. It's still got the big old spine, but the head shape is different, and it's quite a bit smaller, but it does have some actions too. You can see you can pull down on the arm or the chomping. You can see some wear and tear throughout the body, but I got it for a pretty good price, so. This T-Rex is an original 1993 Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex made by Kenner. It's got an all soft body, it's a soft rubber. It's got a green underbelly and a red side with spots. Its legs though are made of hard plastic and then it transitions up to the soft rubber right up here. And with this figure, when you squeeze the stomach, it has a roaring function. It used to have sound effects and it doesn't work too well anymore but it's a pretty old figure, so what can you expect? Next up, we've got the JP53 Chaos Effect Velociraptorix from Jurassic Park. This is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur. They definitely aren't making any figures that look quite like this anymore. See, it's got these spikes all over its body. It's got these wing-like things and a super long tail with those spikes at the end as well. And you can see that it actually is spring-loaded so that when you move the legs, its neck can move up and down and its arms go up and down too. Next up, we've got a smaller figure. This is the Chasmosaurus, JP21. This figure is in decent condition. You can see it's got the tan side, brown underbelly, and the gray top. Plus it has an action with its leg that when you pull it, it goes into a roaring position. And the sound effects still work actually. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Tyrannosaurus Rex from 1997. This is the JP28 figure. This once again has the rubber body. It has some pretty cool coloring with yellow, black, and green blue color and a light underbelly. And you can see that it actually has the throat tunnel all the way down to its stomach, just like the super colossal figures I have now, but a bit smaller. This figure back here, I believe, is another Lost World Tyrannosaurus from 1997. You can see it's colored way differently. I believe this one was custom colored at some point, but it's got the hard front arms that you can swivel, plastic legs, and then the rest of the body is rubber. And this also has the throat tunnel down to its stomach too. 
Now, obviously, this isn't a dinosaur, but this is still from Jurassic Park. This is the Lost World Humvee Capture Vehicle. See that it's got these things that come down on the side, as well as these that go up top. I believe these are for humans to sit inside so that they can see way higher when they're riding way high up on the car. Next up is the 1997 Jurassic Park Lost World Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex has hard plastic legs. The entire leg is made of hard plastic on both sides, as are the arms, but the rest of the body is that soft rubber again. And with this figure, when you move the tail around, it actually swings its head back and forth. Way over here on the edge, we've got a super colossal T-Rex. Now, I actually don't know how old this figure is, but it looks quite a bit different than all the other super colossal T-Rexes that I have. Might have been custom painted, but let's check it out. You can see the battle damage on the side. Plus, it comes with some sound effects when you open the mouth. That's pretty awesome. And just like all the rest of my super colossal figures, it is pretty adjustable. You can move the tail, the legs, the arm, and you can open up its mouth really big. Up next, we've got a Jurassic Park puppet. This thing is pretty old. And I believe it is a Velociraptor. I made it entirely out of rubber, so the whole thing is pretty soft. This is the Jurassic Park Lost World Stegosaurus. JP24. You can see that I don't have the battle damage cover anymore. I'm not sure where that went. But this figure has a harder plastic body and the tail is a softer rubber that swings back and forth. Here is the classic Triceratops from Jurassic Park. This is JP08. See, it's got the battle damage on the side. And just like many of the other figures, it's got a soft rubbery body and a function when you squeeze the stomach, the head goes up and down. Next up is the JP-06 Battle Damage Tyrannosaurus figure. This figure, once again, has a soft rubbery body throughout most, except for the feet are hard plastic and the arms. Most of its body is a light tan color with that darker striping on top, and it's got a lighter underbelly. And let's check out that battle damage on the side too. You can see the bones and a little bit of underneath the bones too. Next up is the Jurassic Park 3 sound activated stalking raptor. Now the motor doesn't work in this figure, but originally you turn it on and it would be able to walk forwards slowly and stealthily. This figure is hard plastic all over. It's got the light underbelly, the dark brown sides, and the purple color right along the top. This is the Lost World Pteranodon JP-22. This figure is really old and it's a little worn down as you can see. It's got the blue and gold body. Its wings are actually a fabric and there's a button on the top of its body used for flapping its wings. Here's another flying dinosaur. This is JP-48. This, I believe, is an Anki Loranodon. It's got some bright green on the underside and purple on the top. Check out those claws. And there's actually a button on its back that you press and it curls its tail inward. And all in all, this is probably over a foot long from wingtip to wingtip. Next up, we've got JP-63. This is the Jurassic Park Baryonyx. I've actually got another one, another very similar Baryonyx right here. And both of them have an action with the leg. When you move the leg, it moves its head back and forth. Next up is the JP-23 Pachycephalosaurus with a ramming head. Now it's slightly broken because when I press the button, the head will fly off, but that's a pretty cool spring-loaded head ramming action. Here we've got the JP-19 Lost World Parasaurolophus. This dinosaur has some pretty cool coloring with the striping down its back and the red right around its head and neck. And this dinosaur also has an action button. You press on its back and it runs. This is the JP-18 Jurassic Park Velociraptor. This dinosaur has some pretty unique patterns over its body. It's got the striping, but it's also got 
these dots and on its arms and neck as well. And it's really quiet because it's an old figure, but it actually does have sound effects. This figure is the Jurassic Park 1994 Utah Raptor. Most of its body is that soft rubber, aside from its legs, which are hard plastic, and its arms. And on this dinosaur, the legs are spring-loaded so that when you press beneath its tail, it'll dip down for a chomp. This is JP58. This is an Amargo Spinus. This has some pretty cool coloring with the black, tan, and red all over its body. And it has an action with its leg that when you pull it, these spines stand up on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaw too. This figure is the JP44 Lost World Triceratops. This is a smaller figure. It's got that dark green coloring. And this figure also has an action when you move the leg it lifts his head up for a roar. Next up, we've got the JP-02 Dilophosaurus. This is a pretty small figure and you can only move the legs on this one, but this is a classic Jurassic Park figurine. Next up is JP-47. This is an Allosaurus and it actually has battle damage that you can take on and off. Look at those huge pieces that you can take off to see what's underneath. You can take it off the leg as well, see the bone underneath and you can even remove parts of its tail too. That is super cool. Here we've got JP42. I believe this is a baby T-Rex. It's actually got a broken leg on its right side. It's got that dark coloring on the top and the light brown and tan on the bottom too. I've got some identical JP06 Velociraptor figures. They've got the brown sides, the dark top and the light underbelly. This is JP12. I believe it is called a Lysinops and it looks kind of like a saber-toothed tiger. Next up, the JP10 Velociraptor. This has a bright red top and a yellow side and a white underbelly. And when you move its legs, it actually opens up its arms. <laughs> Plus, I've even got some classic figurines. I've got two of the Lost World Ian Malcolm glider action figures. I've got the 1997 Ian Malcolm figure. Come on! And I've got the Alan Grant figurine as well. <laughs> I think I've got a few more human figurines in here. This first one is the Robert Muldoon figurine. Oh boy! This second one, I believe, is Harpoon Harrison. Awesome! And I believe this one is the Jurassic Park Lost World, Nick Van Owen. Gotcha! And last but not least, we've got a few teeny tiny figures in here. Can you guess what type of dinosaurs these are? Let me know in the comments below. Today we're going to be checking out a collection of some of my scariest carnivore dinosaurs from biggest to smallest and we're going to be putting them up over here to check them out side by side. So let's get started with the biggest one, the Indominus Rex. This figure is absolutely massive. It is larger than a lot of my T-Rex figures and this is actually the battle damage edition. See it turns red when you press the button, which is really cool. Plus. The rest of the body is very adjustable. You can move all its arms, its legs, you can adjust its neck, and it even has a button on its tail to activate the jaw. So let's go ahead and set the Indominus Rex down at the edge right over here. Moving on, let's see what the next largest dinosaur is. Probably the Giganotosaurus. This is another super large figure. It's got the green body with the black detailing all over, and it has a few actions actually as well. The first action is a button on the top of its tail that activates the swinging action with its entire upper torso. And there's also a button beneath its tail to activate just the jaw alone. All right, let's put this Giganotosaurus down right next to the Indominus Rex. And look at the size difference even between those two as well. That's pretty crazy. 
All right, next up, let's see. I bet it's one of the T-Rexes and it's probably the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure has some awesome coloring and shading and is the most poseable out of basically all my T-Rex figures. And an interesting feature of the Hammond Collection is the realistic parts of its mouth. It's got these flaps on its side that are rubber, so they actually move around pretty realistically. The tongue is also rubberized as well. Let's put this Hammond Collection T-Rex right next to the Giganotosaurus. All right, I bet the next biggest one is this other T-Rex figure. This is a Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. It's got some brand new coloring. It's got the orange brown color and some gray detailing on the top. And this is actually an extreme battle damage T-Rex. You can press the button to reveal the damage on its side, just like that Indominus Rex over there. So since this is the next biggest T-Rex, let's put it down right next to the Hammond Collection T-Rex. All right, looking pretty good so far. Next up in size is this Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the largest Allosaurus figure that I have, and it actually has some battle damage on the side. Let me show you that. Right here, you see it's hidden completely right now, but then you can click it down to reveal the ribs, and then you can even lift those up to reveal the intestines inside. This is really cool, and the only Allosaurus that I have that can do that. Plus, it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this Allosaurus down right next to the extreme battle damage T-Rex. Let's see, what's next biggest in size? I think it might be this Endoraptor right here. This thing's pretty large. It's got the all black body with the iconic gold stripe down its side. And this one actually has a few actions. You can see there's a little button on its tail right there to activate its arms. And there's a button at the bottom of its tail to activate its jaw too. All right, let's set this Endoraptor down next to the Allosaurus. That Allosaurus is quite a bit larger. All right, let's keep digging. I think this Carnotaurus might be the next largest size. It's got some battle damage on its nose and it is the darker brown version of the Carnotaurus. And it has the action button on its tail to activate the jaw as well. Let's set it down. You know what? I think it might be larger than the Endoraptor, so let's go ahead and have them switch places real quick. There we go. That's looking better. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure, but this one is smaller than the one that I just showed you, and it is a bit more brightly colored. It's a brighter red, it has the light underbelly, and then the black detailing on the top, and it has an action button on its back instead of its tail to activate the jaw. All right, let's set it down right next to the Endoraptor. Let's see, I think the next biggest carnivore in this collection is a Tarbosaurus. And this is definitely a scary looking carnivore. Check out that red underneath its chin and those red eyes too. And all those spikes, those are massive. Let's put this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Check out all those dinosaurs we have so far. Super cool. All right, let's see, next in size, Maybe this other Allosaurus figure right here. This Allosaurus has a slide lever action on its back, so you get a bunch of different sound effects with it. You can get a growl all the way to a roar. All right, let's set this dinosaur down right next to the Tarbosaurus. And it is quite a bit smaller than the Tarbosaurus. Next up, I think, is the Giganotosaurus. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus, so a whole lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier but it has the same coloring and detailing. And it has sound effects that you can hear that you can activate by pressing this button up top. All right, let's set it down right next to the Allosaurus. They're actually pretty similar in size, so it might be a little hard to tell who's larger, but I think it's still the Allosaurus. Next, I think, is a Pyroraptor figure. This is the new Jurassic World Dominion version, and it is the basic version as well, so you can't open and close the jaw, but you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail a bit. Let's set this down right next to the smaller Giganotosaurus figure. Next up in size in the Scary Carnivore Collection is the Mega Raptor. This thing has some super bright coloring, you can tell that it is a feathered dinosaur. You can see some feathers on its legs, on its tail, on its arms. It's pretty cool. 
So let's set this down right next to the Mega Raptor. <laughs> next up is this slightly smaller Endo Raptor, a bit smaller than the earlier version that we saw, but it has the same coloring, and this one actually does not have any action buttons, but it is super poseable. Let's put this down next to the Mega Raptor. Next in size, we've got the basic Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This has the white body with the brown striping all over and those bright red eyes. Let's put this down next to the smaller Endoraptor. Here is an Amber Collection Velociraptor. I can't remember which Velociraptor this is, but it has the brown coloring with the darker striping all over its body. Looks like we're running out of room on the edge there, so we're gonna create a new row right up in front here. Next is this much smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an earlier version of the Indominus Rex compared to this one way over here on the edge, and look at that size difference too. And actually, I think this smaller Indominus Rex has a slightly more blue tone than the super large one. It's pretty cool. Let's put this down right next to the Amber Collection Velociraptor. For the next smallest scary carnivore, I've actually got this brand new one from Jurassic World Dominion. This one I believe is pronounced Aquilmosaurus. Let's open it up. So this is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur, and it's actually an extreme battle damage edition that you can see on the sides. Just click this button, and there you go, you reveal the damage underneath. Plus you can pose its neck, and I think you can even open and close its mouth too. There we go. That's pretty cool. Let's put this down next to the Indominus Rex. The next up in size of scary carnivores is this extreme battle damage Pyroraptor. Just like the dinosaur that we just saw, there's a button on top that activates the battle damage. Plus, the rest of its body is poseable as well. And check out the size difference from this Pyroraptor to this basic Pyroraptor right there. A huge difference in size. Let's put it down right up front here. All right, now we're getting down to the really small ones. Here is a super small Atrociraptor figure. It has the same color as the basic Atrociraptor that we saw earlier, but is a whole lot smaller. So let's put this right next to the Pyroraptor. And I've actually got one more Atrociraptor figure in here with totally different coloring. This one is a bright orange with tan stripes on its body, and it's got some yellow evil looking eyes. So let's put this right next to the smaller Atrociraptor right in front. And it looks like we've got a few Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue striping down both sides of its body. So let's put Velociraptor Blue right next to the orange Atrociraptor. And this other Velociraptor that I've got in here is a brown, and yellow Velociraptor. It's pretty similar to Velociraptor Blue, but different coloring, and it's got some reflective green eyes. That's pretty cool. Let's set this one down. And finally, I've got some super small Jurassic World scary carnivore figures in here. Let's put these on the table and check them out one by one. I think the first largest is probably this Baryonyx. I think it's a Baryonyx figure. It's all green in color, so not a whole lot of difference with the coloring, but it's got a decent amount of texturing. Let's put this next to the larger Velociraptor. Next up in size, let's see, I think is probably this Velociraptor figure. This one has two different colors on it, even though it's so small. Oh no, actually three. It's got a pink tongue and the two tones of gray on its body. That's pretty cool. Let's put it down next to the Baryonyx. Next up is the Carnotaurus figure. I got this one pretty recently in a pack and you can actually open and close its mouth. Let's set this one down here. And last of all is this Baryonyx figure that actually came in the same pack as this little Carnotaurus. Let's put them side by side and it is a bit smaller. All right, we're finished. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're checking out not just one, but two bins of Jurassic World figures. There are 100 Jurassic World figures in here. Let's get started with this bin on the right. First up is this hybrid Indominus Rex figure. Even got sound effects too. Plus, 
There's spikes that come out on its back too. This is an extreme battle damage orange Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's got the battle damage all over its body and there's an action at the top of its head to activate the jaw. Next up is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. This T-Rex has a button on its back for the jaws and you can use the tail for a stomping action. Here's another Indominus Rex figure. This one has a rubber neck while the rest of its body is a hard plastic and you can use the arms to open and close the jaws. Over here, we've got a Terran T-Rex. This T-Rex is pretty cool because it has a button that activates the tearing action with its mouth. Look at that. That's pretty intense. And there's another button on its back to activate the tail. Over here, we've got a really cool Spinosaurus figure. This figure is pretty big, and it's got some awesome coloring and detailing all over its body. And like many of the other large figures, it has a button on the top of its head to activate the jaw. This, I believe, is called the Seatz Micorerum. It's got an orange and blue body with some great detailing as well. It's got tons of spikes on its head, and you can use the tail to control the mouth and the neck. This is an orange Velociraptor. It's a pretty basic figure, so you can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail, but it's pretty large and still pretty cool. Here is a huge Allosaurus figure. This has the classic coloring for many of the Allosaurus figures, and best of all, it's got battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. This is a T-Rex figure, but with some cool coloring. It's got the red and the black spots all over its body and the light underbelly as well. Plus, it's got an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Here's a similar T-Rex of the same size, but with totally different coloring. And actually, this one is a hybrid T-Rex because it has spines that pop out of its back, just like that. Next up is a Carcharodontosaurus figure. This figure is medium size and it has one action button on its back to activate the chomping action. <laughs> This is an Albertosaurus figure. It's got the dark green body with orange detailing, and you can use the tail to control the head and jaw on this figure. Here is a medium-sized Velociraptor figure. It's a lot bigger than many of the Velociraptor figures that I have, and I actually have a few other that are very similar to it as well. Check these out. They're all around the same size and have many of the same features. This one is a light tan with green stripes. This one's darker colored. And this one actually has some battle damage on its side that you can press. I believe this dinosaur is a Pachycephalosaurus. It's got a dark purple coloring with some detailing along the top and an action button with its tail for the head butting. Next up, we've got a smaller Indominus Rex figure with battle damage on the side that you can open and close. That's pretty cool. Plus, you can use the tail to control the head on this figure too. Next up, I believe this is the Nasutoceratops figure. It's got the dark blue body with some different coloring all throughout. It's got those huge horns in the front and two action buttons, one to lift up its head and one to swing its tail. This is a huge Pteranodon figure. It's pretty basic because it can't do a whole lot, but it has some pretty cool coloring on the wings. You can move the wings up and down as well as open and close the mouth. I've got another winged dinosaur here, but I'm actually not sure what type of dinosaur this is. So let me know in the comments below. This big dinosaur, I believe, is called an Amargosaurus. It's got two huge ridges on its neck that go all the way down its back to its tail, and it has two action buttons, one to operate the neck and one to operate the tail. Here is another huge Velociraptor figure. This one is actually Velociraptor Blue. It's got these stripes down its side, and you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail on this figure. This is the basic Scorpios Rex figure. It's got the poisonous quills on its tail, and you can move the arms and legs on this figure too. Next up is the Pentaceratops figure. This figure is pretty close to a Triceratops, but it's got a huge frill on the front and a ton more horns too. You can use the action button to lift up its neck and to swing its torso around too. Here's a couple more medium-sized Velociraptor figures. This first one is a dark green with black stripes. 
And this other one is a lot brighter and it actually has battle damage on its side as well. That's pretty cool. Plus with this figure, you can use the tail to open and close the jaw. Here is a Triceratops figure with the clay red coloring and the brown on the top. And it's got one action button to lift up the head. This next figure, I believe, is the Sinoceratops. Also looks quite a bit like a Triceratops as well, but again, some big differences in the front. And with this figure, you can use the tail to control the head. Next up is the giant Quetzalcoatlus dinosaur. This winged dinosaur is from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie and has a few action buttons on it. The first action button you can press to flap its wings and the second button activates its jaw. Here's a Dimetrodon figure with the light blue-gray coloring on the sides and the giant red spine on top. Check out these smaller dinosaurs. I think these are both called Proceratops. We've got one with the purple coloring and a little bit of yellow. The other one is light green with also some yellow coloring as well. This is a dark green and light green Sauropelta with those huge spikes coming out of its back. Here is a smaller carnivore dinosaur. This is a Herrerasaurus and it's got an action button with its tail that opens and closes its jaw. Here is a Styracosaurus figure. It's got those two super bright circles right on the front and tons of horns around its head too. Here is the Shringosaurus figure. It's pretty odd looking. It's got the yellow body with the brown detailing on top and a super long neck and some horns at the very top. This is the Miragaya figure. It's got a dark body with some lighter coloring in the back and those two giant horns sticking out of its back too. Here's a smaller Triceratops figure with battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. This is a Stigimaloc figure with the dark brown coloring on the sides and some darker detailing along the top, plus an action button to activate the headbutting action. This is a Parasaurolophus figure. This is a newer one, I think from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the light tan body with some darker detailing right along the top. Here's another Pachycephalosaurus figure with a light tan body and the darker coloring along the top and the action button on its tail to activate the head button. This is a baby Brachiosaurus figure. It can move the neck up and down as well as move the legs and open and close the jaw too. And here are two Gallimimus figures, one with a dark green coloring and one with the light tan and brown coloring along the top. We've got one more bin to go, but before we do, let's check out these brand new ones that I just bought, including this giant Dreadnoughtus figure. Let's open this one up first. All right, here is the Dreadnoughtus fully assembled. It's actually really hard to show even the whole thing on camera because it is so long. This neck is a lot longer than a Brachiosaurus, I think. Let's check out the head first. You can open and close its mouth. And you can move the neck back and forth. See that swivel right there? You can adjust the legs and you can even move the tail back and forth too. This figure is ginormous and it has some pretty cool coloring along the top and the sides as well. This next figure I think is pronounced the Rugops Primus figure. It's from the ferocious pack of Jurassic World Dominion. This is a pretty cool looking figure. It's got the dark green body with the black tail and the black detailing around its head. And you can move the legs, the arms, the neck, and the head as well. Next up is the Jurassic World Herrerasaurus figure. This figure has a lighter green body with some teal blue coloring along the top, while its face is that dark green color too. You can open and close the jaws manually, and you can move all the other limbs as well. Next is the Jurassic World Legacy Collection, Dr. Ian Malcolm. Here is Dr. Ian Malcolm with his fiery torch, and it also came with this small dinosaur. I can't remember the name of this dinosaur, but it's a pretty cool set. And next, we've got the Camp Cretaceous Soundstrike Pteranodon. 
All right, let's unfold those wings. This is a pretty big dinosaur. It's probably a foot long from wingtip to wingtip, and it's got a few action buttons as well. The first one you can press to flap its wings and get some sound effects. And the second button activates its jaw. Now let's dig into this second bin. First off, we've got an Indominus Rex figure. This figure is huge and has the classic gray coloring that you can see in the movies. Over here is another Pteranodon figure, but this one I believe is from the Amber Collection. So it's got rubbery wings and a whole lot more detail too. This is another huge Spinosaurus figure. This one has the green body with the light underbelly, but it's still got the red spine and the red detailing around its face too. In the back here, we've got a T-Rex figure with the camouflage coloring. That's pretty cool. And this T-Rex has two actions. You can pull up on its tail for a chomping action, or you can pull down on the tail for a roaring action. Here is a T-Rex figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got a rubbery tail and a chomping action when you lift up its body. Here's another T-Rex figure with the gray and brown coloring on its body. It's very adjustable with its neck and its legs and its arms, and there's the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This is a Carcharodontosaurus figure with the blue coloring on the sides and the brighter detailing along its back. And it's got an action button on its back for the chomping. Next is a Stegosaurus figure with the gray blue body and the lighter underbelly. And this figure has an action button that when you press down right here, it swings its tail back and forth. Watch out for those spikes. This is an Allosaurus figure with a slide lever action on the top so you can get a bunch of different sound effects and different roaring poses too. Here is a Sucomimus figure with the blue body and the yellow detailing along the top. And this figure has one action button for the chomping. Here's one of my favorite dinosaurs, the Carnotaurus. This figure has the red coloring on the side and the dark purple on top with an action button to activate the jaw and the neck. This, I believe, is another Cynoceratops figure. It's got the light green body with some yellow detailing on its tail and on the front as well. And when you press down on the back of this figure, it lifts its head up. This is another Allosaurus figure with different coloring. It's got the gray body with the yellow detailing. You can move all of its limbs and it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. This is a Ceratosaurus figure with the gray coloring on the bottom and some brown and red all the way up to the top of its face. Here is one of my largest Endoraptor figures. This figure has a few different actions. First, there's a button on its tail to activate the arms. You can use the tail to swivel the torso around and there's a button on the bottom of the tail to activate the jaw. Next up, we've got a huge Dilophosaurus figure with the bright red coloring and the even brighter frills in the front. This is a pretty basic figure though, so you can't do too much with it. You can move the arms and legs and the tail a little bit. Here is the Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the light tan body with some lighter striping along the top and when you press down on this Iguanodon, it lifts its head up and down. Next up is a Cryolophosaurus figure. This figure has some darker coloring along its body. It's also got some brighter red detailing all the way up to the crown on the top of its head. And you can use the tail to swing the neck back and forth too. Way over here, I believe this dinosaur is called the Kentrosaurus. It looks kind of like a Stegosaurus, but it's got these huge spikes coming out of its side. And this figure has a slide lever action on its back to swing those spikes back and forth. Here is a Triceratops figure in the brown and blue coloring. Plus you can use the tail on this dinosaur to control the neck. All right, we've got a Baryonyx figure in here. This one has the light brown and the dark gray blue coloring and there's an action button on its back to activate its jaws. We've got another Baryonyx figure in here, but this one is super bright. It's got the bright green coloring along its side and bottom, and the brown along the top, plus that action button to activate its jaw too. Here's a pretty rare dinosaur. This is the Edmontosaurus. 
It's got some pretty cool coloring along its body and you can use the tail to control the neck. Next up, we've got a Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This one is the bright orange and brown Velociraptor and it is super poseable. Here is an older Ankylosaurus figure. This one is actually a hybrid and it has special armor plating that you can take on and off. Plus it has an action button that when you move this leg, it swings its tail back and forth and moves its head too. I've got a few mini T-Rex figures in here. These are also older figures from the first Jurassic World movie. They're both pretty identical, but with different coloring and they both have the action where you can move its jaw and its neck by moving the tail around. <laughs> Looks like I've got some more Velociraptor figures in here. Check out this one. This one is dark blue, but it has the yellow and gold coloring along the top of its head. I've also got these green Velociraptors too. This one is in the sneaking pose, and this one has some really cool detailing along the top of its body. These two figures are both Dilophosaurus figures. This one is the newer figure and is a bit smaller, but it does have an action button on its tail to activate the frills and open the jaw in the front, which is pretty cool. And this older Dilophosaurus figure, I believe from the first Jurassic World movie, it's a bit bigger, has battle damage on the side, and you can use the tail to move its neck. <laughs> Here's another Stegosaurus figure. This one has the brown, tan, and green coloring. And it also has an action button that when you press down right here, it swings its tail back and forth. Looks like I've got three more Ankylosaurus figures, all with different coloring. This first one is brown and has the green and gray coloring on the top, plus with an action button to swing its tail. This next Ankylosaurus has the clay red underside with the tan and brown on top. And this third Ankylosaurus has the yellow coloring on the bottom with the green and gray on top and a slide lever action to swing the tail back and forth. Here is another Dilophosaurus figure from the first Jurassic World movie. And this figure is super bright. Plus it has the action on its tail to move its neck up and down. Here's another giant Stegosaurus figure. This one has a softer green blue coloring and it has the action button that you press down to swing its tail back and forth. Here's another Stegosaurus figure, but this one has the gray, brown, tan, and green coloring all over its body. And this one actually has two action buttons. The first one moves its head up and down. And the second one swings the tail back and forth. This is a Parasaurolophus figure with the light yellow coloring and the brown stripes. And it's got two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second swings its tail back and forth. We've got some more Velociraptor and Atrociraptor figures in here. First, we've got another Velociraptor blue figure. We've also got this purple and red Velociraptor. And we've got two Atrociraptor figures as well. We've got one that's tan and in the crawling pose, and we've got a bright orange red one with the white striping. Next up, we've got a Sauropelta figure in the clay red color that can swing back and forth. So you better watch out for those spikes. We've also got this Moros Intrepidus figure with the light green coloring and the orange on its tail too. Here's another small Indominus Rex figure. This one also has the battle damage on its side and you can use the tail to control its jaw and its neck too. <coughs> this is another Stigimaloc figure. This one does not have any action buttons, but you can move its legs, its arms, and its head around too. And here is also another baby Brachiosaurus figure. This one though has the gray and purple coloring right along the top. And last of all is this Herrerasaurus figure with the dark blue coloring and the lighter detailing on its back and all the way up to its head too. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.